In MARI 6, we're continuing our USD journey with improvements to the USD Export Manager introduced in MARI 5, allowing you to get a better look at your USD assets in other LookDev DCCs at the earlier stages in the pipeline. Where before you were able to assign channels within the USD Export Manager and then export your asset as a look file or assembly, you're now able to mark multiple materials and shaders within your project for export. As well as being able to export multiple materials, you're now also able to assign selection groups to their respective materials. These material assignments are then preserved when exporting a USD look or assembly file, making setup in other LookDev DCCs such as Katana minimal. The USD look exporter also now supports a number of vendor shaders such as Arnold Standard Surface, Pixar Surface, Principal BRDF and USD Service Preview, allowing you to get a first look at your final look quicker than ever before. The USD Look Exporter works with both a standard channels workflow and a multi-channel bakepoint workflow. If working with channels, you can easily hook your channels into a shader model and the USD Look Exporter will pick it up. You're also able to hook your channels into more than one shader model if your look file needs to contain multiple shader bindings. Currently, the USD Look Exporter supports Arnold Standard Surface, Pixar Surface, Principled BRDF, and USD Surface Preview. Alternatively, material nodes or any other node tree will need to be connected to a shader model via a multi-channel bakepoint. Once the material is plugged into a multi-channel bakepoint, you can set the depth and resolution of your baked textures and then plug the multi-channel bakepoint into a shader model. The multi-channel bakepoint can be baked, but the USD look exporter will still pick up on your material even if it is not. Settings determined in the multi-channel bakepoint, such as depth, resolution and colour space roles will be used by Mari upon export. If using this workflow, it's also important to name your shaders something equivalent to the respective material so that it's easy to find and set these shaders in the USD Look Exporter. To access the USD Look Exporter, you can click the Export Manager button or go to Channels, Export Manager. In the Export Manager, click on the USD Look Export tab. This opens the USD Look Export Manager. In this window, you can select materials or shaders to export, as well as assign face selection groups to your materials. To add materials or shaders to the USD Look Exporter, click the plus icon at the top of the window. Once added, double click the box under the shader that you want to be exported. I want to export my Arnold shaders, so I'm going to double click the box under the Arnold Standard Surface column and then select the material that I want from the drop down. I'm also going to double click on this Material 1 box and rename my material so it matches the name of the material that I've added to the Export Manager. This is optional, but it's good practice to keep everything labelled in a way that's easy to understand in case you ever need to revisit this setup or hand your work over to someone else. Once a material is in the USD Look Exporter, we can right click on it and select Edit Shader Inputs. In the window that opens, we're able to change the size, depth, colour space and file extension, as well as mark channels not to be exported in the same way that we'd be able to in the regular Export Manager. Once we've adjusted those settings as needed, click Close. Because the USD Look Exporter supports exporting multiple materials at once, we can repeat this process as many times as needed. Because I have multiple materials in my project that I want to export, I'm going to add them by clicking the plus icon, selecting the material that I want to add to the USD Look Exporter, and then renaming it to something relevant so things are easier to manage. I'm then going to repeat this step until I have all of the materials that I want to be exported present in the USD Look Exporter. If you only have one shader present in your node graph, or you only want to export one shader, feel free to skip this step. So I've added all the materials that I want to export, but before we get into exporting our materials, let's take a look at how we can preserve our material assignments. By preserving our material assignments on export, we're able to open our USD assembly file in another DCC and have all of our materials already assigned to the selection sets that we determined in the exporter. This bypasses a lot of the usual setup that you would need to do when bringing an asset into another DCC and allows you to get a first look at your look dev asset a lot earlier in your pipeline. To add material assignments, select the material that you want to assign selection groups to in the USD look export tab. Once selected, click this button. 
This opens the Edit Material Selection Group Assignments window. In here, we're able to assign the selection groups to our materials. Because I've selected my metal material, I want to assign any selection groups that I have that would have the metal material assigned to it. So for example, the armour or the crown. To do this, I'm going to click on the armour selection group. I have a few more selection groups set up that have metal in the name, so I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and then click on the other selection groups that I want to be assigned. Once I have everything selected, I'm going to click this single arrow button pointing to the right. This moves all my selected selection groups from the project selection groups column into the material selection groups column. If you want to move all selection groups into the project selection groups column, you can click this double arrow button. If you've accidentally moved a selection group into the material selection groups column that you didn't mean to, you can select it and then click the single arrow button that's pointing to the left. This moves it out of the material selection groups column and back into the project selection groups column. If you want to move everything in the material selection groups column back into the project selection groups column, click the double arrow button that's pointing to the left. Once we have all the selection groups that we want to be assigned to our materials moved into the selection groups column, click OK. Once assigned, any materials that have material assignments are indicated by this orange icon and if we click on our material, we can see that the names of the assigned selection groups are shown in assigned selection groups. Just like adding materials, this process can be repeated as many times as needed. So before we take a look at how to properly set yourself up for export, I just want to go over what some of these options mean and why you would use them. So the first is a USD look file. The USD look file will create an export that only contains the look of your assets. This means that only your materials, assignments and shading nodes will be exported while the model is not. So if I bring my look file into Katana and then expand the scene graph, we can see that I have all of my materials in the scene graph, but no model to assign them to. However, if you want an assembled USD file with both your model and your look combined, you'll be wanting an assembly file. To create the assembly, you'll also need a payload USD file that contains your model. The assembly parameter can be left as it is, but in the payload parameter, you will need to manually direct Mari to where the USD file containing all your assets geometry lives by clicking the button next to the input field, navigating to your payload, and then pressing OK. When assigned, the assembly file will read this payload and then apply your materials and material assignments to it. If I open up my assembly in Katana, we can see that my asset and materials are available in the scene graph and my shader is automatically applied without having to create any additional material assigned nodes. So the other two parameters in the USD look exporter that are important to be aware of are the root name and UV set name parameters. For the assembly and look files to work as expected, both of these need to have some attention paid to them. For root name, it's important that this matches the root name in your USD payload file. When inputting your root name, it's important to also follow absolute path formatting conventions and prefix your root name with a forward slash. With the UV set name, we can leave it as is. ST is the standard name for UV maps when working in USD, and Mari populates this field by default. However, some digital content creation packages that allow you to export as a USD format may have their UV maps name set to map1 or something similar. Before clicking export, we can also change the file paths for the texture target directory, USD look file, and USD assembly file. To do this, click the button with the three dots next to whichever directory that you want to change, and then determine a place to save your textures, look file, or assembly in the file browser that appears. Once this information is present in one parameter, you can simply copy and paste the file directory into the other parameters as needed. You also have the option to override the depth and resolution of your exported textures with the override depth and override resolution parameters, but this can be left as is. Once everything is set up, all you need to do is click export and your USD look file and assembly files are exported. Once exported, you can find your assembly and look files as well as your textures in your save location. From there, you can import your USD files into your lookdev DCC. 
For more information on Mari, check out learn.foundry.com forward slash Mari for tutorials, articles and the user guide. Additional information on USD can be found in the description below.